Welcome back. You're now watching video 11 and the continuation of this video presentation titled Ignorance of White and Black Supremacy Exposed. In my series of video presentations called The Redemption from the Curse of the Black Spell, and again, I must say thanks very much for joining me and for being with me this far into this <clears throat> presentation. Now, if you did not watch video 1 to video 10 of this presentation in the order of video 1 to video 10, or um, I, I strongly suggest that you please do so first. Um, by so doing... I think you may better appreciate and possible understand the content of this video and my reasons for so much detail and you, you'll learn to appreciate it even more I think remember um, earlier I, I mentioned that the three main elements of human to human communication are intention uh, meaning and interpretation and I defined intention as what is in your mind of which only you know um, only you know the true meaning of that which is in your mind intention is what I call private we can only know for sure a person's true intention in one of um, two ways. By their actions and by their words. First, let me explain what I mean by knowing a person's intention by their actions. <clears throat> Sorry. You may see me. And for whatever reasons credible or not you may just not like me and you may think that or you may think of me as a criminal as an evil um, as a black um, threatening person as you may think of me as being an ugly person that is the image that you may have about me or that is the image you may create of me in your mind but I don't know that and I might not even suspect that because I am not a mind reader in other words I am not hearing your thoughts and seeing what is going on the images that are being created in your head what is going on in your head or in your mind if you prefer however I can or from practical experience or training I can or I may be able to read your gestures or I may be able to interpret and determine determine your 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 feelings towards me by your attitude towards me because as the old saying goes, actions speak much louder than words. Now, let me give you an example, which is from my own practical experiences. Almost every day, I have come across and encounter uh, some people that grin at me. And oftentimes scornfully so sometimes out of fear which I understand because they think that I am a black man especially one that is walking or one that walks with a stick they grin their grin is like a dog that I see in an advertisement here on Canadian TV advertising denture or false teeth in a false teeth commercial now please note I said a grin 
and definitely not a warm pleasant friendly and genuine uh, smile that comes naturally from the heart but a grin from which they are expecting these people are expecting that like an idiot I must now be happy that they grin at me and because they think that I am thinking what they think they are I must now interpret that they meant good or that they meant good morning or that they are friendly towards me and I should now gladly smile back at them now from my perspective only a fool would know that their grin is a fake now second way I may know your true intention or what your true intention is you can express your true feelings and tell me exactly what you are thinking and how you are feeling about me through the power of the spoken words however you might think that it might not be uh, you know the wisest thing to do especially if you think that I truly know and understand all about your language and especially the words in your language that you are using to describe me so you might choose to to lie to me just to make me feel good while disguising your true feelings it's been done every day it's been done every moment of the day in business in politics and religion pleasure you name it it is called pretense or uh, hypocrisy finally finally meaning meaning is that which you would like to verbally transmit to the hearer or to the listener that will create an image or that will create images in his or her mind that is meaning again maybe the true image you have in your mind or the, the, the true that you would like to deliberately and intentionally that you deliberately and intentionally want your hearer or listener to receive or you want to create in their minds now with this knowledge and understanding let us dissect and analyze uh, statement number one John is a black skinned man on the surface and to the unsuspecting and not so critically minded person which by the way most people are and for those of us that are ignorant of the cunningness of our slave masters their heirs and successors English language this may seem very innocent and in that it is just simply telling us two things one that John is a man and two that his skin complexion is black on the surface you may interpret that from this statement because of your purity and sincerity of heart and you are thinking nothing else of it you may interpret that because that is exactly how you were and that is exactly how you are taught by the system to interpret it and not to think anything else of it you may interpret that because you were taught that others are different because of their skin complexion and maybe you were also taught that you are white and some others are black or that are the other way around or the other way around in other words you may interpret it like that because from a child you were taught to compare and contrast between what your parents religious teachers um, school teachers uh, society and the society in general told you were black and white and you just accepted it like 
everyone else did before you. However, upon careful analysis, you may discover that the statement is really saying much more than that. For example, what if you or someone were to ask you uh, these questions? What if you were to ask yourself these questions or someone were to ask you these questions? One, why is John different? And the answer you received is, what if the answer you received is, John is different because his skin is black. And what if you were to ask a follow-up question, such as, why is John's skin black? Or why does John has black skin? And what if you were to receive the following answers, especially since the adjective that is used to describe um, John's skin is the word black. Number one, the reason why John's skin, the answer you receive is the reason why John, John's, or the reason why John has black skin is because his ancestors were cursed by God and their skin complexion became black as a result and as a result and a mark of God's um, curse upon them. In other words, let me repeat that. The reason why John has black skin is because his ancestors were cursed by God and their skin complexion became black as a result and as a mark of God's curse upon them. But originally, or before God cursed him, or cursed his ancestors, John's ancestors' skin complexion were white. Answer number two, looking at some of the possible answers here. The reason why John has black skin is because he belongs to an evil race of people. And there is nothing good about him and that nothing good can ever come of him. Number three, answer number three, the reasons why the reason why John has black skin is because his black skin is indicating censure and disgrace. And that his black skin is evidence that he is marked by disaster or misfortune. Number four, the reason why John has black skin is because he is of the African race and thus he is not only inferior to all other races on earth but he is also a subhuman. Number five, the reasons why, or rather the reason why John has black skin is because he was born to be a slave forever to all other races of people on the earth, etc. And the reasons, the, the answers could go on and on. Now, some of you, my viewers, may say, Oh, the mystic philosopher. Nobody thinks uh, like that. You are blowing things way, way out of proportion. You are off the wall on this one. Mystic philosopher, you are being paranoid. And conjuring up some form of conspiracy theories against black people. I've heard these all before. So some of you may be saying that. And you have all right to think like that. Now, please let me draw your attention to some script, scriptures, some sacred or holy writings, and, possible, and possibly some religious commentaries and teachings from at least one, or if, you, if time um, permits, maybe two uh, prominent religions, uh, their holy scriptures, their teachings and commentaries on who 
and their commentaries on who or what the group of people that is labeled and called black people. Let us see what they think of us, what they think of these people. Let us see how they, 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 their scriptures and their beliefs say that how they should see us, how they should view the people who they call black and, and how they should also treat them. Now, to do so, I will start by reading a quote from the Book of Mormons that was published in the late 1820s. And if time permits, or at another time, I will also read from the Jewish Talmud. I, I will also suggest that if you are watching and listening to this presentation from your computer while you are online, I will also suggest that you just simply Google black people and early Mormonism. Just type that in, black people and early Mormonism. And you should come up with this quote and you can read along with me so that we may dissect and evaluate this quote and teachings together. So you will understand that it is not one of this is not something that I, the mystic philosopher, has conjured. And I quote, And God has cursed, sorry, and God has caused the cursing to come upon them. Yea, even a sore cursing because of their iniquity. For behold, they had hardened their hearts against him that they had become like unto a flint. Wherefore, as they were white, and exceedingly fear and delightsome, that they might not be enticing unto my people, the Lord God did cause a, a skin of blackness to come upon them. And thus said the Lord God, I will cause that they shall be loathsome unto thy people save they shall repent of their iniquities." Unquote. This is from the second Nephi, N-E-P-H-I 5 and verse 21. Now, let us look very carefully at what, according to the Mormon's sacred scriptures, um, the Mormons God is claiming to have done to a group of people who rebelled against him. Now some also claim that this group of people is the people that are known as Africans today. Therefore I assume because I am a descendant of African, I'm an African descendant. My people is from that geographical uh, region of the planet and it is quite evident to those that are watching can't say for those that are not seeing but for those that are watching this video that I am African or an Afri an, an Af African descent therefore I assume that they were they would suggest or that they are suggesting that these were my African ancestors so I hereby, as an African, claim my right to dissect this writing and to see if it is true or if it makes any logical sense to I, the mystic philosopher. So first, let us look at the people before the alleged curse. According to this scripture, the people were white. And not only were they white, my friends, read it for yourself. Because as exalted as the word white is, it was not, and I repeat, it was not sufficient enough to describe these people before the Mormon's God, according to this scripture, interfered with them. 
But here, according to the Mormon scripture, and I quote, Wherefore, as they were white and exceedingly fear, F A I R, and they liked some, unquote. Now, I doubt very much that even William Shakespeare in the most glorious of his days could have put together such a highly exalted adjectival phrase in the English language to describe a people. And I repeat, before the Mormons, God allegedly cursed the Africans. And I quote, Wherefore, as they were white, and exceedingly fear and delight some. Unquote. Now, just think for a moment, my people, especially you, my African brothers and sisters that are part of the Mormon's religion. If this rebellious people that was filled with iniquity, according to this, the Mormon's sacred scriptures look so awesome before the mormons god interfered with them then can you begin to imagine what the supposedly righteous and god serving mormons must have or should have looked like then and now and if this is true then those Mormons then must have, at the very least, looked like the alleged sinners and iniquity workers or much better than white and exceedingly fear and delightsome. They should have looked angelic, I, 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 I would imagine. Therefore, in order for them, meaning the white and exceedingly fear and delight some iniquity workers not to be enticing meaning not to be attractive not to be charming or alluring or tempting unto the mormons the mormons god and i quote did cause a skin of blackness to come upon them Unquote. So, if my interpretation of this is at all correct, then at the time of this occurrence, all the people, including the Mormons, that were inhabiting our planet Earth were white and exceedingly fear and delightsome. So my question to the Mormons today, and I humbly ask for a video response. So my, questions to, my question to the Mormons today, and anyone that may be able to give an account of this obvious disappearance, is this, where are all the white and exceedingly fear and delight some people that according to my interpretation of this the Mormon scriptures once inhabited our planet earth if we were to accept that the highly carbonated and highly melaninated skin tone Africans today like myself are the white and exceedingly fear and delight some skinned people that the Mormons God cursed by and i quote the lord god did cause a skin of blackness to come up on them unquote then where are the rest of the white mormon people where have they gone where have they gone because i the mystic philosopher have never seen a white mormon or a white human and this our planet earth let alone one that is called a mormon all the mormons or the people called mormons that i have ever personally seen 
and occasionally and on occasions spoken to and even attended their church at least once some years ago are best and most honestly described as European Caucasian with pink with pale skin pinkish pale skin or reddish pink skin or biologically melanin deficient European Caucasian people and if they were to claim that they are the descendants of the white people that according to their scriptures once inhabited the earth then it is obvious that they are victims of a curse themselves or themselves because from my perspective with the exception of their customary white shirt and possible some of them white teeth and eyes killer nothing else about them is white remotely or even close to being white and in and in as much as i must give credit to satan the devil for being able to deceive me for almost 48 years of my life into believing that i was a black man he can't fool me anymore into claiming that european caucasian people are white for once i was blind but now i can see he ain't white so if my reading and interpretation of this the mormon scripture is at all correct and if the mormons then in the late 1820s and the mormons today in the 21st century 192 years later honestly believe that their god did said those things and that their god did do those things to my african ancestors then and also to us their descendants now then it is evident from this scripture that every time a person that is a mormon sees me or any of my fellow african brothers or sisters with highly melanated or carbon skin tone dear god will not only remind them that he has cursed me black or to be more precise let me use the exact words the lord dear god the lord god did cause a, a, a skin of blackness to come upon them unquote but also he the mormons god would cause me and my fellow africans to be loathsome unto them meaning i will cause them to feel disgusted of me i will be detestable unto them i will be a nuisance to them i will be like a diseased person unto them and i quote and and thus said the lord god the mormons god by the way i will cause that they shall be loathsome unto thy people save they shall repent of their iniquities unquote my other question is to all my fellow africans that are mormons are now part of the mormon religion if this scripture is divinely inspired and correct and the mormons god did say these things and did do those things since you're my african brothers and sisters since your conversion and repentance of your iniquities against the mormons god and since you became a mormon have your skin changed back to being white and exceedingly fair and delightsome skinned people and if not could you please 
please explain why not this is just one example of what some religions and religious people think of us Africans and people that Mother Nature has blessed with the most highly melaninated carbon skin. Next time I will be looking at others and exposing to you the hypocrisies. This is the end of video 11 so please switch to video 12 now or at your convenience and join me for the continuation of this presentation titled ignorance of white and black supremacy exposed i think it's gonna get even better